all right guys welcome back to the channel my name is Nick and this is Idaho up and today we're gonna be going over loading and unloading a motorcycle into a trailer for transport okay so the first thing you're gonna do prior to loading the bike especially on a utility trailer about this size is make sure it's hooked up to the tow vehicle um, and make sure it's actually hooked onto the ball because if it's not and you start loading the bike the trailer could flip up off the ball and you could drop the bike and that would suck so right here i'm lowering the trailer coupler onto the ball and then i'm going to lock it and i'm going to give it a good tug upwards just to make sure it's secure onto the ball and it won't come off during transport one thing I forgot to mention is you want to make sure that your ball hitch is in the receiver and secured with a good receiver pin so that it doesn't come free from the vehicle as you're transporting. There you see me locking it and there's the good tug. Okay, right here I'm attaching the safety chains to the tow vehicle and I'm doing it in an X pattern. And I was taught that the thought behind this is that if the coupler comes off the ball, it could potentially land on the X pattern of the chain and give you time to stop before you lose the trailer. I don't know if this is the case or if the chains are just break because I've never had this happen. If you have, leave something in the comments and let me know how that experience went. Okay, now I'm just taking the trailer wiring harness and hooking it up to my tow vehicle. And then I'll check the lights just to ensure they're working and I don't get rear-ended with my motorcycle on the trailer. Now just move your trailer jack into position for transport. Make sure it's tight so that it doesn't take a tumble while you're driving. This has actually happened to me in the past. Last but not least, make sure you have a coupler pin inserted into your coupler. I recommend you use a locking one because it wouldn't be too hard for two people to pick this trailer up, put it on another vehicle, and steal your bike simply because the coupler wasn't locked. Okay, so once your trailer's hooked up to your tow vehicle and you're comfortable with that, you can move on to the next step, which is to try to find a good place to load the bike. You can tell that my driveway has got quite an angle on it. However, towards the top here, it levels out pretty well and this is where I'm gonna load the bike. Um, this trailer is specifically designed for putting a motorcycle on it. But if you have a regular utility trailer, the angle on the ramp might be higher, which is a concern because you could potentially bottom out the bike when you pull it onto the trailer. Um, I've actually done this before when I was loading a Iron 883 onto one of my buddy's utility trailers and it sucked because I dropped the bike and he was in the process of buying it from me. Um, pretty embarrassing first off, but he ultimately bought the motorcycle anyway. There wasn't a lot of damage and it worked out. Um, but if you have a utility trailer with that issue and you're trying to load a bike, a good option would be to put the trailer the other way because then as where this is like, my driveway's like this, if the driveway's like this, then the ramp's gonna straighten out and then you'll have a flat portion to pull up on the, onto the trailer with the bike. Um, one thing I do wanna point out with this specific trailer is there's this bracket on the side here. And just by gravity, when I set this ramp, it tends to do that and leave me this gap. So that could be a concern once you pull a 700 pound motorcycle on it and then the bracket moves and the trailer drops, it could potentially cause you to drop the bike. So if that's, um, if you have this issue with your trailer, just make sure you pull this up drop that down and make sure that gaps away so it doesn't move on you in the middle of loading um, the other thing you want to do is just have your straps ready to tie the bike down so that you're not looking for them um, while you're on top of the bike so I've just got my straps ready to go hooked into those spots on the trick and I 
tie this specific bike down low on the forks um, mainly because the suspension can still move when you're driving and I have a fin uh, fairing on it a pretty large fairing and I don't want to scratch the fairing so I just kind of have my straps um, on both sides ready to go and then the other thing you want to keep in mind is where your kickstand's going when you put the bike down before you put it in the block so that's what this pad is um, but if you don't have one just make sure you're not dropping it through the center and dropping the bike that way um, and speaking of the block just make sure your block's set and ready to go this one's actually a little wide because i helped another buddy take his bike down to the shop and i haven't set the block to my tire yet but i'll i'll straighten that out when i pull it up um beyond that i think we're good to go and we'll load the bike from this point Okay, this is where the metal meets the meat. Make sure as you approach the trailer that both your tires are lined up to the block the best you can be. And don't feel like you need to be rushed. It's all about smooth throttle control and clutch control as you climb the trailer. I'm going to show a second view on here, which is where you'd most likely bottom out the bike if it was going to happen. The first time I load a motorcycle on a trailer, I like to have someone watching this view so that if I'm going to bottom out, they can tell me and I can back out before doing so. Also, keep in mind that this bike I can flat foot as I climb this trailer, so I don't have to climb it all in one shot. If you have to climb it all in one shot, it's a little different game. And then once you're up, just make sure your tire is nice and seated in the block. At this point, make sure you leave the bike in gear so it doesn't have a tendency to try to roll out of the block while you're pulling the trailer. I also recommend you have someone help you by sitting on the bike while you tie it down to the trailer. You can get away with doing it by yourself, but it's a little more difficult and there's more potential to drop the bike. Also, if your helper is wearing shorts, make sure that they know the exhaust is hot so they don't burn their leg on the pipe. At this point, you're ready to strap the bike down to the trailer for transport. You'll notice that I don't use the hook on the strap on the bike end like I did on the trailer end. This is because it's less secure. Instead, just feed the strap through itself using the ring located just beneath the hook. Also, feed the strap around the lower portion of the forks. Now you just feed the strap into the ratchet and then you alternate back and forth on both sides tightening the straps while keeping in mind that you want the bike to remain standing straight up. As the tension in the straps get tighter you can grab the handlebars of the bike and wiggle it back and forth and you'll get a feel for how secure it is to the trailer. And depending how long your trip is, you might want to consider strapping down the back tire of the bike so it doesn't hop around during transport. This is also a consideration if the road you're driving on is extremely rough. Here I'm using the corners of the trailer to strap down the back tire, but you could also just consider using the center beam right underneath the tire, which would probably be actually more secure. After you strap the bike down to the trailer, you can lift the ramp and make sure all the hinges are locked for transport. Also, if you have a trailer like this one with a large spring on the ramp, this is to assist you in lifting the ramp. But you need to be mindful not to just let it go because it could hit the back of the bike. Instead, make sure you guide it forward slowly while you lock it into place. Okay, and that's it. So this is what she looks like when we're all done. Load it up. Just a couple of things I wanted to point on. Um, the straps. I mean, you kind of just tie up the access however you see fit. I don't really plan on using these straps for anything but this bike, so I might just cut them shorter so I only have to tie them around once, but you just don't want them dangling in the wind while you're going down the freeway. And I 
That's the whole setup. One thing you do want to look out for is this gap right here. So I'm fine. That's plenty of room. But if your uh, fairing comes forward, forward, more farther, farther forward, you might have to do something else with your block to push it back. Okay, guys. Now I'm gonna unload it. When it comes to unloading the bike. You just undo the straps in the opposite order. Make sure that you have someone sitting on the bike when you undo the straps on the front forks. This is because as you release the tension on one side of the bike, it'll tend to lean to the opposite direction and you don't want the bike to drop. I find that unloading the bike off the trailer is easier than putting it on the trailer. This is because you can just focus on braking as you come down the ramp. Matter of fact, you don't even have to start the bike. However, I choose to do so just in the off chance that I'm in a situation that for some reason I have to pull the bike forward. I don't have to try to start the bike as it's on an incline. And just like that, guys, that's how you load and unload a motorcycle onto a trailer. All right, guys, that's it for this video. If you're enjoying the content I'm putting out, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up and ring that bell. Also, if you're watching this on another platform and you don't have a YouTube account, go ahead and create one and subscribe to my channel. That way you don't miss out on my content in the future. Appreciate you guys watching. See you next time and keep up.